Corinthians 16, 13. It's where we will be. All right. All right, let's turn to school number three. Once again, Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to share your words more with your precious people. I pray you think through my mind, speak through my mouth, that those who are here will be touched, edified, strengthened, and set free. We pray that revelation knowledge flow freely, that your word have free course in this place, free from satanic influence. Let me think clearly and speak intelligently, that those who are here will understand your word. And Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you that your word declares that two or three are gathered together in your name and you will be here in the midst. Father, we sense your presence through the person of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that he and has his anointing is here. And Father, it is our bold declaration that we won't leave the same way that we came and we will not just be hearers of your word, but we will be doers of your word, not receiving ourselves. And so, Father, we thank you for everything that's about to transpire in this place. We give you honor, glory, and thanksgiving. We love you, honor you, and praise you for this very day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. and amen. First Corinthians chapter number 16, verse number 13. That's where we will be. All right, ladies, I'm going to ask you to kind of bear with us. We want to share some things that, germane, that is germane to men. And of course, certainly, um, a lot of it applies to you. If you have sons, if you uh, are married, if you uh, uh, mentor young men, you have a nephew or whatnot. So... Certainly all of this will, will apply to you as well. But we definitely want to share some things that will impact men and the positive men and impact our faith as well. And so uh, <clears throat> we uh, give you the heads up in that regard. All right, so in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13, I'm reading from the Berean Study Bible. It says, be on alert, stand firm in the faith, be men of courage, and be strong. We read that again. It says, be on alert, stand firm in the faith, be men of courage, be strong. So it's what we use as a subject entitled a real man. A real man. Years ago there was a survey done and they asked both men and women, you know, what were the characteristics that make up a real man? And as you can imagine, we have all kinds of answers that came forth. And so I want to share them with you and we see if you agree. Uh, first it said, uh, real man is, uh, now women, I know you would love this. Number one, remembering your, your wedding anniversary. Can all women say amen? <laughs> That was number one of this. Remember your wedding anniversary. Number two, investigating strange noises in the house. <laughs> number three, offering to carry a woman's bag. Or even I can add to that, offering to open the door for a woman. Number four, ability. Oh, my God. Come on, man. That, that infamous honey-do list. The ability to do basic do-it-yourself tasks around the house. I've learned that YouTube is my friend. If I don't know how to do it, I check it out. And I, I, I try to do it, you know, the best of my ability. But... Uh, being able to do do-it-yourself tasks around the house. Number five is knowing how to tie a tie. Number six is a good one. Knowing how to change a tie. Amen? Right. Number seven. Oh, my God. Come on now. Men, can you agree with this? Understanding that when a woman says I'm fine, she's really not fine. Men, can you agree with that? <laughs> we have to investigate a little bit deeper. Go a little deeper than that. Number eight. Knowing how to give a common, firm handshake. Number nine, knowing when to accept defeat and when to apologize. Number ten, Brother Brown, you read this, knowing how to handle a barbecue. Mm -hmm. All right? <laughs> a lot of people, the general public say, says that these are some of the characteristics that make up a real man. Now, obviously, we know probably the best person to ask of what is a real man is Almighty God, correct? Yes. He's the one who created us. And so if anyone ought to know, it would be him. And so Paul, writing by the Spirit of God, gave us some insight on what a real man is is all about. How many of you know we're living in a day and age that we need real men in our society? We need real men in our homes. We need real men in our families. You know, right now, more than 20 million, some say 20 million, 20 million, 20 million children grow up in a home where there isn't a physical presence of a father. 20 million, that's a lot. 20 million. It impacts the African American community more than anything. Over 60% of African Americans grow up without a physical presence of a father. But it doesn't stop there. Millions of people uh, have dads that are physically present, but many of those people who are have fathers who are physically present, oftentimes those same fathers are emotionally absent. And so you can make the argument that you might as well not even have anyone there if that father is there, yet if he's emotionally absent. And so this is the challenge that we face. Some argue that fatherlessness is the number one family and social problem in America. In fact, many would say that this would be a national crisis if we looked at it 
through the proper lens. So it speaks to the massive void in our society of real men. And then we go over to the church because we have issues in the church as well. We need real men not only in our homes, in our family, but how many of you know we need real men within our churches, our local assemblies. Right now, you can just look up today. And churches across America, the majority of churches have women in it. In fact, only about 40, really less than 40% of a congregation's population are men. And so, now, you said, Pastor, what's the deal? Is that very important? Well, how do you know that it's been said that families, get this now, don't miss this point, are 90%, somebody say 90, 90. 90. They're 90% likely to attend church if the man in the household does. So that simply means if a man does not come to church, it is a threat to the entire congregation. Because what happens is if a man doesn't come to church, more times than not, they're going to lose entire families, both men and women. And so we see there is a great boy, there is a great need for real men, not only in society, not only in our families, not only in our homes, but especially in the body of Christ. And so Paul, he spoke to this point, this issue, this concern. The Spirit of God gave him inspiration to talk about why having men is so very important and what makes up a real man. He said four things in this passage. He said, number one, he said, a real man needs to always be on alert. They need to also be firm in their faith. He says, also, real men uh, should be men of courage. Somebody say courage. Right. And also, real men need to be strong. Once again, he says, be alert, stand firm in the faith, be men of courage, and be strong. So, first thing Paul says, to be a real man, you have to be on alert. You need to be on alert. The word alert means be quick to notice any unusual or anything unusual or potentially dangerous. Alert means watchful. It means you're wide awake. Your your eyes are open. You're on guard. You're you're wide-eyed and bushy-tailed. That's what it means. And, and how many of you know this day and age we live in a very very dangerous time? In fact, the Bible says we live in perilous times. And so this is a time where men, come on now, we have to be on alert. We have to be on guard. Our eyes have to be wide open. We need to have the mantra that you know, Satan, I can see you a mile away. See, we're on guard to the potential threats that come to ourselves, our faith, and our family. How many of you know this is the time to be on alert? There are natural threats. There are threats of robbers and, and thieves and, and, and bullies and scam artists and, and criminals and pedophiles. So men have to be on alert. See, there's spiritual threats as well, threats to our faith, threats to our thought life, come on somebody, threats to our marriage and threats to our spiritual well-being, not only our own well-being, but the spiritual well-being of our children and our family. Paul said it this way, actually Peter wrote it, the apostle in the New Testament, he says, be alert, be on guard in 1 Peter 10 to 5 verse 8. He says, but your enemy, get this, the devil, somebody say the devil. He roams about as a roaring lion, seeking or looking for someone to devour. So that simply means Satan is working overtime to destroy our faith, our family, and our future. And so therefore, man, being in the home, being the priest of that home, being a man of God, standing on your post, you have to have your eyes wide open. You have to see the enemy when he comes. The Bible says, he roams about as a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Devour you. Praise the Lord. That's what he does. Okay, let's see if we can ask. This is all shares things with me. We like numbers. It's just, you know, that's why you have to be on guard as a, as a father. See, I'm saying, believe me, see, you might know that people start to sexualize children as early as the age of three and four. You have to be on alert. You know how many people in the church who have been sexually abused and emotionally abused in the homes? And it seemingly happens right underneath our noses. Isn't that how Adam dropped the ball? Mm -hmm. The enemy came to his life. Mm -hmm. My question was, where is Adam? Where was he at? Mm -hmm. See, and many times as men who are not careful, we be sleeping on the job. Mm -hmm. And the enemy's trying to destroy our family, our life, our faith, and our future. And so he says the first thing, we're going to be a real man. Somebody say real man. Real man. We have to be on alert. Men have to be on alert. Get this now. And so we see being on alert also means that we're wise to the tricky of the enemy. The Bible says we're not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. See, it also means you're not ignorant of the dangers of society and today's culture on your faith and your family. I'm very aware of this, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to guard them and shield them as much as I can. Mm -hmm. But I always think about the impact that today's culture will have on our girls. Mm -hmm. You hear stuff come out of their mouth, you hear them, see them act certain way, you wonder where they got that from. Mm -hmm. And so you have to always guard yourself. And guard their lives as well. We're here to protect them. 
Being on alert also means that you're sensitive, some say sensitive, to the needs of your family and those in your circle of influence. How many of you know as men, that's why we can't be emotionally absent? Now, listen, I'll speak at length about how important it is for a man to provide for his household. We get into that, okay? And make sure that they're going to work and whatnot. But how I many you know, we, we, listen, it goes further than that. We have to make sure we're doing the right things financially. We have to make sure we're there present. But listen, also emotionally, and sometimes this is where we are lacking. I put my hand up first. Because we have to address, get this, the emotional needs of our wife, our family, our children as well. We can't be physically present and emotionally absent. So that means if we are alert, if we are aware, hallelujah, we have to be sensitive to their needs. I'm getting ahead of myself. I remember Carol, she was on a job one time. And, uh, you know, I try to be very objective about things. And it's like they're mistreating. It wasn't being fair. It wasn't an equitable environment. And I kind of felt she was going through some things. I get ahead of myself. I was like, you know, they try that message. How about you just give me two of those? Okay. <laughs> Somebody say sensitive. Now I'm going to get into that a little bit. No, we got to be sensitive. That's right. Okay? That's right. I, I've learned it. Now, listen, I can say I learned that doing it the wrong way. Because <laughs> sometimes I wasn't as sensitive to her needs as I needed to be. You know, man, we very, we're just straight as a line. We're very objective. And, and uh, we, you know, we don't got to feel anything, you know? <laughs> But how I many you know sometimes other people, and especially women, aren't wired that way? And so, therefore, being on alert means we're sensitive to the needs of others as well. And so, we have to do this moving forward. Now, real man also means that we have to be firm in the faith. Again, verse 13 says, Be on alert, stand firm. Somebody say firm. firm. Stand firm in the faith. So, that simply means as a man, you need to have faith initially. In other words, you need to have initial faith because. How can we stand firm in the faith if we don't have faith at all? In other words, we need to be saved. We need to be born again. We need to be in a place where we have a real, genuine, bona fide relationship with Almighty God. That's what a real man does. How many of you know real men love Jesus? Real men love the Lord. And so we're talking about a man of faith, a man who, who is, is spending time with God. We're talking about a man who prays. See, we're talking about a man who, who takes a stand in the church. He spends time in his work. We're talking about a man who submitted to the local church. He's a member in good standing. We're talking about a man who is an example of faith, an example of integrity, and an example of holy living. Are you with me? And see, that's what we have to push our men to do and to be. Are you following me? It's amazing sometimes today, and I've been in the public school system, we push our kids to play athletics. We want them to be the next LeBron James and Michael Jordan. But how about pushing them to have integrity and character that is above reproach? How about pushing them to love God with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their mind? Yes. Our children are our legacy. And so therefore, men being the pillars of families and future, future fathers and husbands, we need to both make sure we're putting faith and the word on the inside of them. Yes. And so Paul says, if you're going to be a real man, you have to be Firm, not any kind of faith, but be firm in your faith. That's what it involves. And, and this means that as a man, you're not double-minded. As a man, you're not vacillating in your faith. You don't believe one day and then doubt the next. Praise the Lord. It means your faith is growing and it's strong. And you're maturing in the things of God. Firm in your faith. Firm in your faith. Remember Sam, right? Three men. They were firm in their faith. They were adamant. About the things of God. They said, you know, we're not going to bow down to the king's image. It makes no difference. The throws of the fiery furnace. They were absolutely firm in their faith. See, they were not bow down. Daniel was the exact same. Mm -hmm. I'm going to continue to pray to my God. You know, the problem is sometimes as men, you know, we, we slow down on stubborn sometimes. <laughs> we don't listen to anybody. We go to the boss, man. We on the job, we act up, you know. You know, we, we got people depending on us. We still act up. We don't listen to anybody. You know, sometimes God is, God is trying to speak to us through our wives. We still won't listen. Sometimes we're very stubborn. We don't like to submit. Sometimes that's like men would like to come to church. We not say, man, praise the Lord. Okay, but it's true. But, you know, we need to flip that on the other side. We need to be firm not against things that we're supposed to be doing or, or stubborn about things that can benefit our lives. We need to be stubborn and firm against the enemy. <laughs> by the devil. Against sin. That's what we should be firm about. Things that come to threaten our families' lives. I was firm when it came to, you know, things that pertain to Carol. I was the other day, you know, girls were playing again. I tried to be very objective. I know my girls ain't all innocent. Now, come on. They're playing and sometimes they go in these little players. I can't stand it. Sometimes parents have the big kids going to small kids play. They ain't got a line saying you got to be this tall to go play. You got kids this tall, as tall as me going on the slide. 
I'm very aware of this. In fact, I told her from the jump, I said, I don't want to, be, I don't want to you know, just act any kind of way. I don't want to be one of those shady preachers because she won't believe that every preacher is shady. This is looking at me. Amen. Amen. So that's why the Bible says, as men, we have to become more firm with them. Our faith, and it's not just about quote scriptures, it's not just having your church name on a church roll, it's about how you live when you go home. Yeah. Let me tell you what, easy to look for God on Sunday, I'm talking about Monday through Saturday. Yeah. See, this world has become real on the inside of us. This world has to make an impression upon our lives, it has to change us. Amen. And so that's what needs to be firm in our faith. Also says, that be a real man. Somebody's a real man. Real it means you're going to be a man of courage. The word courage means to be bold, a risk taker. It means you're daring. It means you're fearless. The Bible says in Proverbs 21, almost done. It says, The wicked flee when no man pursues, or no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. I found today's real man, we really have to have courage. A whole lot of courage. You know, it takes a whole lot of courage as a man to live a holy life in today's culture. Amen. Oh, y'all ain't never been in the locker room, have you? <laughs> you don't know what it's like. The person can't come to man. You know, it's, it takes a lot of courage for a man to say, I'm going to live a celibate life until I get married. I'm going to It takes a whole lot of courage because in the locker room, you hear just the opposite. See, we're trying to have bragging rights and, and how many women we can be with, how many women we can sleep with. Just the other day, I started talking about an NBA player and he's, he's engaged in one woman, got her pregnant. Dating two more women on the side, two more babies on the way. He's 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 giving his buddies a high five. How I many know that's that's not what God wants us to do? Mm -hmm. It takes a whole lot of courage. Let me give you the opposite though. Man of God years ago named AC Green. He was an NBA yep. as well. Yep. Christian man. He let everybody know, let the world yep. know. Now he's he's an NBA. You got women now yep. going from city to city, they're throwing themselves at him. He said, I made up my mind. I'm going to be a virgin for the tongue until I get married. Yep. And he did it, too. Yep. Yep. His teammates couldn't listen. Let me tell you what. You talk about courage. Yep. You talk about having, let me tell you, it's one thing when one or two women want you, but when ten want you, come on now. That's a whole lot of faith. It took a whole lot of courage. Not only that, he had all kind of money. Yeah. His teammates told him, I don't know how he does it because I see the women throwing themselves at him. He must be a true man of faith. Mm-hmm. Must be a real man. Mm -hmm. And we take a whole lot of courage. That's the kind of courage God wants us to have today. Courage also means you're willing to go against the grain of God in an ungodly world. Courage also means, and it speaks to the level of faith that you operate in. Courage also means you confront wrong when you see it and you're not seeing yeah. it. Yeah. I had to learn that. Courage also means you tell the truth when it hurts. You live a transparent life. Courage also means you're fearless. I mean, remember the story of David. The Bible says he was fearless. That's what it means to be a real man. You are fearless. When it comes to threats to your family, you're fearless when it comes to the enemy himself. Amen. The Bible says when everyone was afraid of their life, David wasn't scared. He knew his God. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said when everyone was running away from him, guess what David did? He ran right at him. Right at him. Right at him. Right at him. He was fearless. Yeah. I believe that's what, what God wants. My God, God had to learn this. Because if I walk with God, let me tell you, I never had an issue with, with having bad motives or not trying to be nice. And, and my heart was always right. But let me tell you what, I didn't have enough courage. Didn't have enough boldness in my life. Did not like confrontation. Couldn't stand it. <laughs> See, I don't want mad at me and people getting all upset and, and you know, people face contort every time I tell them something they don't want to hear. And so, you know, I would try. I'd be that one who just you know, tiptoe around the two, you know, I'd always, you know, walk, talk around the situation. And I'm walking on the eggs. I don't want to have shit in my I learned the Lord told me, you got to get out of that son. I had to learn not to be a people pleaser. I had to learn not to fear people. And I'm here to tell you, the greatest deliverance you ever get is from people. Mm. And so God said, if we're going to be a real man, we have to confront some things. We have to be, be bold against the enemy when the enemy and the hell house are attacking your family. Oh. You have to find that strong man and say, Take, come back for a second round. You will not destroy my faith. You will not destroy my family. And you can't have my kids. Amen. You will not wreck my marriage. You will not wreck my home. This is God's house. God had to teach me. That son, you got to be more bold. I was spiritually and naturally soft. I was. Had a pastor to tell me I do, and I got mad. Because sometimes I wouldn't confront what I needed to confront. 
Sometimes I wouldn't be as bold and as firm in my faith, and the enemy would have a field day with me. Just steamroll himself mm -hmm. over me. And so therefore he said, you've got to be strong. You have to be bold. You have to have some courage. And so I learned that you have to have courage in a marriage because it takes courage to be a family. You have to have courage when it comes to business. I mean, you know, some deals, you take some deals you, you walk away from. Amen. So you got to have courage to, to, to negotiate and to use that leverage correctly. You need to have courage in ministry to face all the challenges that come up in a local church. Amen. And have courage to take risks. No risk, no reward. And I've, I've learned over time that courage means you have to be fearless. Mm. I've learned sometimes on the other side of your fear is your greatest fear. Mm. I know that from experience. Sometimes on the other side, let me tell you, sometimes even as a man, God tells us to step out of the word, to live in him, and we skip. Amen. We worry about what people are going to say about who's going to leave. And the past we get into this as well. And sometimes we're scared about what happens if it doesn't work out. Amen. For him, I'm going to tell you that sometimes on the other side of your fear is your greatest fear. That's right. Somebody say real man, real man. Real man. And finally, real man means that you're strong. It means that you possess strength in your life. Again, it says be on alert, stand firm in the faith, be men of courage, and be strong. Stay with me on the That's what you need to be strong. First of all, it means we need to be spiritually strong. That goes without being sick. We also need to be mentally strong. Somebody say mentally strong. Uh -huh. How do I suppose that's mentally strong? Uh -huh. Mental strength, Pastor. Mental strength, the ability to push through a person fear. When you push through the break, you feel like you're not. That's what means to be mentally really strong. Oh my God, good take. When you come to us, there will be times you will feel like giving up when it comes to your family, when it comes to the challenges with your children. You feel like just waving the white flag when it comes to your marriage, when it comes to your faith. You gotta be mentally really strong. We gotta be mentally really tough. Sometimes as men, we put way too easy. Way too easy. <laughs> we just, just apply a little bit of pressure to us. I was like, well, I guess the Lord told me to go in a different direction. No, we have to be mentally strong. So we say mentally strong. Yeah. Also, we need to be physically strong. I believe there's men who need to be the physical fitness. You know the Bible talks about that with the virtuous woman? That she strengthened her arms. Yeah. The Amplified says she was committed to physical fitness. You know, if, if women got to be committed to physical fitness, we sure need to be. I remember I remember there was a time when, uh, just when Dylan Rooker really came in, a, 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 a mother Emmanuel here me, and I was... I was like, man, what if something comes to our house? And I was thinking about packing and everything. I, I all kind of things lost my mind. But, uh, but at the end of the day, we need to be in a position to protect. How many know the word father means protect? And so we need to be committed to physical fitness. We need to be as strong as we possibly can be. Praise the Lord. I move right along. <laughs> strong also means we're not afraid of hard work. Somebody say hard work. Hard work. I don't have it up here, but the Bible says First Timothy chapter 5, 8, if anyone does provide for his own special goals for his own household, he is denied the faith, and he is worse than an infidel. Yes. Yep. As we're a man, we have a great work ethic. Not afraid of hard work. Nothing, nothing worse than a lazy man. Mm. Nothing worse than that. So we have to be committed to hard work. So we can't refuse to do what's necessary to provide for our house. So strong doesn't mean you're intimidating, you're threatening, or you're a bully. It means you possess strength of character. You, you have a strong sense of right and wrong. It means you control your aggression. Control your aggression. And it's under control. It's under wraps. He says, just the other day we were trying to do some renovations to a home. And, uh, Putting up by the side, and I was surprised how sturdy and how durable it was, and how we carried it. We had half the hang off the back of the truck, and the crack and everything like that. It's like stronger than I thought. Then I talked to my neighbor, he said, Well, listen, by the side is good. He said, But if a rock hits it, you can put a hole and puncture a hole in it. He said, Let me show you my hardy plant. He said, Hardy plant is a little different because this thing's like cement. This thing's hard as a rock. You got a 50 year warranty on this thing. Hard plant, you got to keep peeing and everything. He said, well, this thing, man, is rock proof, insect proof, hurricane proof. Okay? This thing does not move. It's sturdy. Like cement. It'll last the test of time. Hurricane, hurricane Katrina can come and that hard plant would not move. You know what? When it comes to our faith, that's how we have to be. How many of you know we don't go through some stars in life? But listen. There's a saying that says tough times don't last. Tough people don't. 
as real men, we have to be tough. We take sometimes, especially if you're married, when your family's looking to you to strong. See, they're looking to you to lead. We gotta be strong. We gotta be like a hardy plant. When that storm comes, we just stand right up there. We stand foot foot. And I remember one time, Karen, I went through probably the most challenging time of our marriage. And I stood there, and out of my spirit, I was prophesying to both of us. And I said, God has forgotten us, then he has not forgotten us. Let me tell you what that was time I wanted to cry. I said, I don't need to let her see me cry. Right <laughs> she needs to see confidence. She needs to see strength right now. It's God has forgotten us. We are going to be all right. And so therefore, when it comes to our lives, that's how we have to be strong. We gotta be tough. That's the kind of man. Spiritually tough. Mentally tough, physically tough as well. And this is what God expects. I will be on I pray for you. I will show you a little close. It pictures as a little step on that. I thought really fit. What we say. It's a real man will lift you up spiritually. <coughs> and I'll put you down on those I agree with that. Spiritually, we have to be in the right place. We won't push anyone else down emotionally. This next one, I thought it was good. Uh oh. It's a real man doesn't love a million girls. Come on. All the ladies said what? Wow. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> he loves one. He loved one girl a million ways. Amen. Isn't that good? About how many million we can get? Love one of the ways to find what we see here. And this is what we said. Real men fear about being aware of God. They have a heart for God. That's what we do. Now, what is this? What is this? What is this? Bless you to praise you for the insight you've shared, what you've allowed us to see concerning what you expect from us. Our families are counting on us, our churches need us. Society is waiting on us. This Father, help us to be the men and women, the men you call us to be. Help us to be the pillars in the community, the pillars of the church. The way you have called us to do.